Hello everyone, this is the RockShock Domain. This fork is a zero, and this is my rescue dog, Hero. In this video, I'm gonna try to fix this, give you a quick little review. Now, it may have come across as I'm a huge RockShock hater, but in reality, they're doing everyone a favor by making this affordable suspension to get more people on the trail. If you're looking for the short answer, this fork is extremely harsh, and I would honestly go with a Yari before this, but just in case you're in the market for one or looking at a bike that has one, let me tell you about my first experience. Before, before riding any kind of new fork, it's really gonna pay off to do a little bit of setup. There was two tokens in this fork and I'm going to take them out. Now, there's nothing wrong with the domain if you're just doing standard trail riding. Only if you're picky or wanting top level of performance this fork is gonna need some modifications. So as the trail goes on here, I am just hitting a wall of resistance and it's extremely harsh. I'm like, what is going on here? Understand this is only like a four foot jump here, but I landed super heavy. I almost crashed because it's just a wall of resistance inside of the Rock Shock domain. Remember, I already took two tokens out of this fork. Removing some air pressure on the trail, the fork actually felt worse. I was regretting this, but it was the plan from the start because many people had told me they had a hard time with this fork. So what I'm gonna do is tear this down and inspect the air spring for some modifications. If you ever plan on taking a RockShock fork apart, you absolutely have to buy these. It's $11 for 50 O-rings. They go in the bottom of the feet of the lower legs right here. If you do not put new ones on, I promise you it will leak. Ah. Definitely not a sealed compression ring. Just make sure you wear some kind of glasses when you're doing snap ring pliers. You have to be super careful when you pull that amper out because it separates. It says it in the instructions to so be careful and I can tell you why, because it comes apart. It's kind of a... The RockShark Yari Supreme, I basically put two bottom out bumpers here and this increases the negative chamber and makes a more plush ride. But admittedly, it's a little bit too big of a negative air chamber. It needs to be perfectly balanced. That's why companies like Vorsprung have it like super engineered with a loop cap to get the negative to positive chamber perfectly correct. This is like some hillbilly shit interneting at a high level stupidity at a third degree. Basically a guy in the comment said, cut this bumper in half and it'll be the perfect number. So I'm gonna try that on the RockShock Domain Air Spring.
If you were watching closely, I made a serious error. So all I did was take the air spring and put grease around it and stuff it in the fork. So it's the next day and there is so much stiction on this, it feels super choppy. The official instructions say you're supposed to grease the inside of the stanchion to prevent that. They also want three milliliters of oil on the top of the air spring. So I'm gonna take it apart and do it correctly. The official documentation says to use heavyweight plush dynamic maxima. I'm just gonna put the light one in the top. We only need three cc's. Now that is the official way to do it. So let's check how it feels. The breakaway pressure is pretty stiff. It hardly feels any better. So is that step super important? It pains me to put this damper back in this fork. The problem is there is no official upgrades for the damper on the RockShock domain. If you read some Reddit posts right here, people are getting away with it, but the problem is the Charger 3 damper is $350. I paid $180 for the fork. Upgrading a super cheap fork, you might as well just go buy a used top end fork. Put the rebound one in first, so then you can add the oil in on top. Now it doesn't say this, but I'm gonna do the same technique on the damper side, cause it's super dry in there. You know, being a mechanic, sometimes you gotta just do things that seem like they make sense and they may not do anything, but it's just so dry in there, it's gonna rip all the O-rings off of the rebound shaft and the other piece that already got ripped off. So now it's all greased up in there. It's not gonna rip the O-rings off and they have a nice layer of grease. It takes 235 milliliters of oil. So that's almost eight syringes full of oil. So maybe that's why it's so heavy because it's like a six pack of beer inside of your fork. Wasn't exactly hard to service this fork, but you need to be extremely careful with the compression damper because it gets stuck inside the stanchion. It is quite a bit fiddly. You have to fill the oil, open the lever, put half a beer of oil in the fork, and do not forget to put the crush washers on the bottom. Whew, boy, this fork is feeling absolutely amazing with that modified air spring. The increased negative air chamber is letting me get all the way through the travel of the fork. It does feel pretty harsh. Okay, critical piece of advice here. I forgot to take my own advice on the first ride. So I'm gonna lower five PSI at a time until the fork starts to feel good. Dropping five PSI was making the domain feel better.
I ended up dropping 10 total PSI. Make sure you run the same section of trail over and over and over so you can gauge how it feels. Once you have the air pressure dialed, it's super important to try to speed the rebound up. But understand the RockShox domain dampers on the cheap side so you can only go one click at a time faster because they're kind of big gaps between the clicks. Once I got the air pressure dialed, it was feeling amazing. One click faster on the rebound, it felt even more amazing. Now this slightly modified air spring is just a little bit of extra small bump compliance the fork did not have. The RockShox Yari Supreme behind me, that negative air chamber was much more plush, but it was not balanced enough on the trail. Now I discovered something super important on that ride. You need to disregard the sag indicators and the trail head app. This fork is best tuned from feel on the trail. That larger negative air chamber does have better breakaway pressure and it does feel smooth, but it is a little bit choppy of a fork. So what you're gonna do is ride it on a big jump or compression and lower or increase the air pressure five PSI at a time. The cheap damping on the fork, be real careful with the rebound because one click is a lot of adjustment. Taking the domain out on some more serious trail riding, I was super nervous the fork was not going to perform. But first thing I wanna talk about is balance. So if you have a Super Deluxe on your bike, the Domain is an excellent match for your Super Deluxe. You're gonna get increased levels of jumpiness. Is that a word? Anyway, I kind of suck at jumping and RockShox products really help me jump better. Now, even with the bigger negative air chamber, the modified air spring I just showed, it still jumps really good. So when the trail gets chunky, this is when having a 38 millimeter stanchion really pays off. Coming in blind to this section, there's a horrible G out, and I was super confident through it. As the trail continues, it's pretty rough and nasty. The damper does start to fade after some sustained, chunky terrain. So if you have huge alpine descents, Charger 3 damper might be the necessary thing for your RockShox domain. Now it is uncertified to put it in there, but long sustaining alpine descents, I'm gonna want an upgraded damper. Continuing on the day, I was just absolutely impressed by the RockShox Domain's mid-stroke support. Third time I'm gonna say this, it's a 180 millimeter fork with zero tokens using air pressure for mid-stroke support. This jumpy blue smooth flow trail was absolutely amazingly fun. I'm honestly a fan of the RockShox Domain. Goodbye, Yari. So the lesson of this video is RockShox products are awesome. They take well to upgrades and modifications. Now, that being said, do not modify your air spring. It's super dangerous. Use the official routes like bore sprung and everything else. Just like the domain, I upgraded the Super Deluxe with the Progressive Air Can and it rides amazing. Just like Hero from the Pound, all his fur is growing back. Now he's an amazing dog. Don't throw your old junky stuff away, upgrade it and make it better. And watch this video here to watch the Super Deluxe go from zero to hero. Hero.